while getting pregnant might seem like a breeze for some people, to some, it might be the most stressful time of their life. Now today on Parenting Today, we're going to discuss infertility. On set is Sheila Waki and Dr. Tele Waki, a couple that will share their journey. We also have Dr. Yamal Patel, a gyna an, an obstetrician gynecologist, who's going to demystify some of the myths and also just tell us the first, the first line treatment for infertility. You don't want to miss this. Join me as I join them. Welcome to the show and thank you for being here today. <laughs> Welcome to the show. You look lovely. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Tell me, so for how long have you been married? Let's start with. No, thank you. With the lady. Oh, with the lady? Okay, we fine. always get the figures right, so yeah. guys don't. <laughs> so we've been married for 12 years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. For 12 years. Yes. And uh, for how long um, did you try getting a child or have you tried getting a child? Well, in, in married, you, you try from day one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> as soon as you're told you can now uh, kiss the bride, uh -huh. things start happening from there, yeah. right? Um, but for us, we actively... Like it became a conscious um, thought two years into our marriage. Um, reason being the first two years we were taking care of his um, late mom. Uh, she fell ill and were her primary caregivers. So yes, we were doing what needs to be done, but um, it wasn't really disturbing us. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, two years in, there's no child. It, it wasn't really an, an issue until um, she passed on, then we're like, okay, now uh, there's like a gap. Something is now missing. Yeah. 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 Most of the yeah. focus is on her. Yeah. So now as we started focusing on us, now we started uh, realizing that we're having this um, thing that's not happening. And, and that's when we started now actively figuring out, okay, what, what to do next? What's happening? That was after two years now. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. But, but even then, it wasn't like an immediate, okay, wow, something is amazing. It was yeah. actually an, a, a series of events that led to us um, having a sit down with our doctor and realizing, okay, um, this is what the problem is and this is what needs to be done and we need to start ASAP. I had gone through a series of losses. His mom, then my best friend died of cancer as well. Then um, the same week my best friend died, my a very close cousin of mine also lost a baby and I was in between burying and being in hospital and so my, my system just flared up and it was on the way to burying the little boy, the one who had just been born, that he decided as we're waiting for people at Lee, see we check into Nairobi hospital, they just do a check on you just to make sure everything is okay. And that's when they found my, my blood pressure was off the roof. And I was fine. I was no symptoms. I was okay. I was running around taking care of everyone. Um, and they found my, my blood pressure was off the roof. I, I, I had diabetes. Okay, my, my sugars was, were also up the roof. Mm -hmm. And that led to a series of, okay, what's going on in your system? Because um, these were not symptoms, they were, they were non-symptomatic. And that now led us to why do you have these issues? And yeah, we got referred to um, Dr. Yamal. So it was a chain of events that led from one thing to the other. Mm. So one thing started it off and then triggered the next thing. So we started first with uh, the high blood pressure, led to a much deeper checkup, which now we found the diabetes. And then that now led now to the point where actually it was a period that was an issue. Even the, that December, I remember that December, my, my periods were crazy. Yes. It was so painful. Yeah. I couldn't leave and the bed. Heavy. And they were so they heavy. heavy. He yeah. had to massage me so that I could heavy. move. Not even yeah. leave the bed, just move. And that that, that now made us, you yeah. know, we need to go see an obstine and find out what's going what's on. Going on. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just bef before we get to that, I want to take you back a bit uh, to the point where you're married now. And uh, I think my question was, was supposed to be, okay, for how long had you, you know, like uh, from getting married, from the day you got married uh, to when now the two years uh, lapsed, had you, had you thought about it before? Like, oh, so we'd want to get pregnant at this, you know, like year one or year two? 
So, before we got married, <laughs> we had thought about 30 kids. Thank you, she remembers that. So in our mind we knew, once we get into this, we are getting 30 children. Each a staircase, <laughs> all the way down, you know. Second floor, third floor, if that is 30 stairs. Yeah. Um, so yes, we, we, ha we did have that in mind um, uh, before we got married. And actually when we did get married, it was still a part of the plan. But as she says correctly now, when we started now taking care of our mom, it, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but it took a back seat as we took care of her. Because she was a more bigger priority than at we that were moment. at that point. Oh, yeah. But yes, we've had the conversations before we got yes. married. Um, our prima classes, there was that yeah. conversation as well. What yeah. if? So I could say God had already started preparing us um, mm. into what we were going into. Mm. And also... Just the fact that he's my friend, we are friends, so our conversations were not, we must get children. Yeah. That there's a certain pressure um, society puts on families. Um, so for us, we, we didn't have that. It was just, okay, let's let's do this first, and then we can now continue focusing on our... Yeah. yeah. I think there's something that he mentioned, that um, once your mom passed on, now the attention yes. came to you guys. Tell me about that. So, um, it was just us. Yeah, there's now no more waking <laughs> exactly. up. Oh, I thought it was actually from people now, like no. the attention. No, 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 no. We're talking about now yeah. us in terms of now, with in relation now to conceiving and getting children. Yeah. That's what we meant in terms of attention. There's, there's, there's the people, but more so there's, there's us. Like what's, what's happening? Mm. Um, shouldn't we have shown something by now? Mm. Um, what's going on? Yeah, and then with all the symptoms now starting, the things starting to happen, and my body just deciding I'm done. Um, yeah. That's when we decided, okay, we need to go see a doctor. Right. Yeah. Go back now, and let's go back to the <laughs> to the doctor now, and and um, you're there doing the checkup, and you're seeing like you know one one thing led to to the other. Tell me about that now. What what? Uh, did, the, did, did the gyna diagnose what what was that diagnosis like for for you so um so from the point where we got the initial diagnosis uh prior to us now going to the specialist uh we had an ultrasound done we had one done much earlier which was normal the second one was done showed a number of vibrates and that's all we had at that time so we, we asked around and were recommended for a specialist who then, um, whom we then saw. And he did his own analysis and that's when we got to find out that she has uh, a concern with the uterus, there's a concern also with the fallopian tubes. Uh, the ovaries were fine at the time. No, they had cysts. Yeah, exactly. yeah actually the entire reproductive system had concerns. And uh, yes, that's, that's when it actually happened. Yeah, so... He found um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah. He found um, my yeah. left tube is blocked. Um, the fibroids were, were, were being the seen. Also big. Um, yeah. The other issues that he found, he found after uh, laparoscopic surgery. Um, and then he found my fimbria, okay. Explain, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in, in a nutshell, in a nutshell the, in a nutshell, the yeah. fallopian tubes at the ends have yeah. finger like structures that help collect the eggs and send to through the tube, to the into, tube uterus. into the uterus. Yeah. If it's fertilized, yay! Um, so he found mine were attached to my um, they had scarring, so they were attached yeah. and they were not moving. Yeah. So he also um, sorted that out through surgery. And the right tube also somewhere closer to the center because of the scarring, it was very narrow as well. Yeah, so so, so we, he decided, uh, let's not bother with that. Um, let's focus on the right tube and see if that can yeah. help us. And we got into um, treatment, fertility treatment, yeah. the tablets, and uh, just to um, speed up the growth of the eggs and let's see how many eggs yeah. we can get and try uh, fertilization yeah. through um, first we tried the normal normal um, method that didn't work yeah. and then we did um, IUI mm -hmm. which is intrauterine insemination yeah. uh, that didn't work we did five rounds actually that yeah. didn't work 
and then the amazing man he is he released us mm. and said i have done the very best i could i would have continued this journey with you but mm. i am not specialized in beyond what, this yeah uh, beyond mm. this i recommend others to you mm. that you can continue with the journey mm. and we, we chose to take a rest and then come 2020, 2020 yeah. we decided okay let's try let's see what we can do so we, we then did IVF um, we did three rounds um, two courts no one, one court, court. Yeah. two did not absolutely like absolutely. no babe we are not selling <laughs> out yeah two yeah. didn't but one court um, however it was a chemical pregnancy yeah and after that we decided okay I've, I've, let, let's yeah let me just chill. Let's enjoy life. Yeah. Let's live. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, we're taking a short break. Uh, we still have Sheila Waki and Dr. Taylor Waki on set. Uh, they're telling us about their journey. Uh, we're talking about infertility and what are some of the misconceptions that, 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 are, that surround uh, infertility. They're going to tell us about that after this short break. Welcome back. You're watching Parenting Today. And on set is Sheila Waki and Dr. Tele Waki, a couple who are narrating their journey. And today's topic is infertility. And we had just gotten to a point uh, where you're talking about supporting each other, how much you supported each other. Uh, sometimes, you know, not having a child in your marriage is always met by a lot of societal mm. pressure. It's never even about, I love it that the two of you stuck together. But sometimes it's actually the pressure. And most, most people uh, get to think, okay, maybe they visit the doctor after the societal pressure. They're like, ay, man, you are too. it's been two years. What's going on? Oh, that's when you realize, by the way. How, how was that for you? Did, was there any societal pressure um, yeah, that you faced at, at the beginning of this? <laughs> well, I mean, as long as you're in society, yeah. there'll be some form of pressure from outside um, coming in. Um, but I, <laughs> I thank God for being a smart mouth because that has really shielded me and covered me. Um, this, this guy has some introverted tendencies. In fact, people out there know he's an introvert. And I think that has also helped cover us, such that no one will bring their questions to him per se, unless there are some he's been told and he hasn't told me. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, societal pressure. Oh, there, there are so many times when I'm going through bloating and someone will come and rub and go like, oh my gosh, what's good? What's good? Is, is there something? Is there something? And you're like, wah, wah, wah. I remember those once I told someone, Yes, there's a lot there. There's an inter there are intestine, there's a liver. There's, like, what, what exactly were you looking for when you're rubbing my tummy? Others, because um, I, I, I was half in church, and others would come and ask me, are you praying about it? And you're like, wow. Hmm, good question. You know, like, are you serious right now? Like, you sat there and thought this girl is not praying about her. I'm staring at the wall. Yeah. yeah. So some would even tell, go sit at that corner, pray. Then you come and tell us what your God says. Then we'll compare notes. Maybe uh, there's something we're <laughs> missing out, you <laughs> know. So just being a smart mouth has helped me. I remember there was an, an uncle who once told us, Simuangeza Bidi. Oh. And you're like, wow. Yeah. Wow. So I remember asking him, uncle, there's nothing we'll do about it. Exactly. And I think yeah. he got really embarrassed. We've never like met him again. At what point did you did you now uh, start, you know, uh, be, uh, what do I say? Like, were you bold enough now to give such answers? From the word oh, from go. The word go oh, that, that's my yeah. nature. Uh -huh. That's just me. I think being Maybe a firstborn. Anyone, so yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> So it wasn't so hard for you. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It's it's never been hard for me to stand up for myself. Yeah. So I think that has really helped us 
and shielded us from society. Mm -hmm. So if someone who comes with a comment, you live in here, <laughs> your goalpost, I, you know, right. and you're like, wow. Actually, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the subtle way which they bring up things, it, it, it's, it's very uncomfortable. I'll be very honest about that. It's very uncomfortable. Why, you, the way they direct their discussion, and they're not talking about it directly, but they're using euphemisms and etc. Yeah. It, it's it's very uncomfortable. So usually I, I I also do the same thing. I just divert it to the next point. They say, is that really important to discuss right now? Yeah. Is that something that really it's been bothering you so much that you mm. cannot do whatever you're doing? So yes, they come up with very subtle ways to be able just to tell you that uh, you're not you're not getting the job done. Yeah. Or and as something a, is and off. as a man actually, you know, I think the pressure most of the times is usually so much on the man. You've never had suggestions like, hey, Ed, should we get you someone else? Should we do what? Like, have you ever gotten such? No, such not, not about somebody else. No, that mm -hmm. has never happened. Yeah. But um, the, the comments are mm. the bigger ones. Um, I'm grateful that most of the friends that I associate with have been very mm. supportive. Mm. Wow. Oh, yeah. That, that has been a very good thing, male and female. Not just female alone, male yeah. and female. So they've been quite supportive. And even they have been defensive as well yeah. you know, to us. Yeah for us so it has been uh it, it's been a, that that part of the journey has also been very important because of them we actually are grateful for them to be able for working with us as well knowing that even when they have kids in fact some of them dump some of them yeah <laughs> there's a time for a whole week we had nine children in our in yeah. our in our house wow. the eldest was eight yeah for yeah, a whole eight, week yeah, and we're like wow 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 this yeah. is what it wow 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 yeah, so the fact that people yeah. trust us with their little ones yes. is such an amazing thing. Our tribe yeah. is amazing. Find your tribe. Yeah. Find people who support you, who um, walk with you. I'm part of um, a group called Waiting Wombs mm -hmm. as a, one of the administrators. And it's an amazing circle. My, my church um, people, are, I've never felt less, um, even when I'm serving. You know, the worship team I serve with. Um, the women's group, their gate, they, they, uh, they feel, they, there's not once that I have felt, oh my gosh, I'm less, mm -hmm. I'm lacking in this, in this way. Yeah, so our tribe has really been there. Our family, like yeah. we have very, a very good support system, mm -hmm. but we didn't sit and wait for it to come. We, we, had we to sought it, it. yeah, oh, we yes. sought it, we worked for it, we built it. Mm -hmm. Even in our projection towards mm -hmm. them, they don't feel like we are lacking something and they have a need to speak into that space. Mm. We give our best in every area that we are active in. Mm. So there's never a space where someone says, oh, you can't teach Sunday school because you don't have children. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we won't invite her for the baby shower. Exactly. <laughs> if if exactly. anything, it's me they call to plan. Whoa. Fact, yeah. that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Actually, yeah. she's the, the, the mama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mama Kupanga, let's call Sheila. Exactly. No, 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 let us call Sheila. Yeah. And, and what she does is that she she owns that, that space. She plans it. It's your child. I'm happy for you. I'll do whatever it is to make sure that this goes well. She, some, most of the time, she even follows up. Are you guys doing? Are you doing okay? Yeah. She does an excellent job. So it's Thank it's you. not. A, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've also <laughs> even been in hospital for deliveries. I've delivered yeah. four babies with yeah. nurses. Yeah. So assisted. assisted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, the language. Sorry. Yeah. The language that's, that's is. <laughs> yeah. I'm so assisted. she's not delivered. She has assisted in delivery. <laughs> yeah. Let's be Says clear. the guy who delivers babies. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Assisted so in delivery. So I have assisted deliveries. Like you're right there when it's happening, and they're like, no, don't leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's. I believe so much so how I've carried myself yes. and my faith that then oozes what the world will give me back. Exactly. And what yeah. are some of those misconceptions that are out uh, there that you yeah. that, that or myths that you feel like you know need to be demystified and, and perceptions changed? The biggest one is you're not normal. You're incomplete. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Well, now for me as a man, it's that you're not a man. Yes. Uh, no, you're not man enough. Sorry, that's that's a correct statement. Uh -huh. You're not man enough. That's the biggest myth. I, I think we have different myths based on our gender. Uh, of course, we have common ones, but yeah. the, the, in terms of gender, not enough, not man enough. No, just not enough. That that is usually the biggest the biggest thing because I mean you you can't make a statement. 
What's mm. wrong with you? It it's really supposed to happen immediately. It's, to it's happen. automatic. Yeah. Yes, you know these things. In fact, by now you should be having even others out of the home. Exactly. So. Yeah. And that's a normal thing. That's a normal thing. And, and you hear these stories about how this guy is with this lady, but he has children outside only because she couldn't get children. Yeah. Then he leaves to go out, you know, to take care of those children as well. It's, it's really devastating. And for me, the key thing was even if we don't have kids, and that's what I remember telling her from the very uh, from the word go, that I'll always work with her, regardless of what happens, whether she gets invalid, whether whatever happens, I'm always going to work with her. So us not having children doesn't make me love her less or appreciate her less. And that's the reason why we're here together. That's a beautiful thing. You know, I, I think when we were talking earlier on on phone, um, we spoke about how. You know, it's actually the Bible that says that children are a gift yes. from God. And for for it to be a gift, like a gift is a surprise, a gift yeah. is not something that you yeah. you say it's not your right. It's yeah, not it's, not it's not your right. right. It's not your right exactly. Yeah. It's not your right. Yes. But for some reason sometimes in the African society we always think like, eh, now that they are married we need to we need to see children. And it's not form. in the African society alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even out there in the Western society, there's yeah. just a dem a silent demand placed on a couple that is newly married for children. Yeah. It's not just in Africa. Um, so yeah, you're right. It's a gift. A child is a gift. Correct. And when the, the giver of the gift is ready, yeah. ah, we are the here. Yes. yes, and if exactly. the giver feels we are probably better gifting our time and energies to other people, then it's still a let gift it to them. be. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The life is not life because of children or lack of it, it it's, yeah. it's it's just you do what you make do of you it. be you Correct. give us the best version of yourself exactly. yeah and uh, I, I like what you've spoken about you know how your friends can just drop their kids in your home yeah <laughs> and you parent them yeah yes. let's talk about that because yeah. you know parenting doesn't have to be like your own children sometimes it's it's it can be like other children who come into that space and yes. how has that experience yes. been, been it's like excellent they mean they made noise they yeah. made a mess <laughs> they never slept or they slept too much yeah. they went they, to bake you know they, they wanted to do things that they couldn't do for children then they, 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 it was just it, it was a whole it was a war zone but it was such a an, beautiful mess yes it was a beautiful yeah. mess thank you thank you that that word is perfect uh, it was a beautiful mess uh it's, it, it's not the first time we're talking about the nine kids we've had our nephew whom we've also worked with as well and we're still working with him uh some of our cousins so it is it's been a journey from different fronts but yes it, it was an excellent experience mm -hmm. and the beauty about it is all these children know we love them yes they know and they know and they know without a shadow of doubt auntie sheila and uncle Kelly love us mm. they have this feeling of safety around yeah. us so it it, it, it kind of I don't know if that's the right way to put it. It simulated a, a home for them, and it did not feel like they were out in a, in a strange area, like we have gone to somebody's place. They felt like they were home, mm -hmm. and that was that was excellent. Mm -hmm. They also know if they are wrong, you will be disciplined. Yeah, and it but happened. you know, it's love. Eh? <laughs> yes. We love you. It was love. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you ever? Okay, now since that time, when when you say I'm not going to, you know, pursue any more of this like treatment, did you did you ever think of? You know, pursuing treatment again. What, what has that been like since that time? So we, okay. So like I said, my energies always go to her, especially during these periods, and I know what she goes through during these periods because I'm on the outside. Mm -hmm. Her, she's seeing steamed fish every day. Me, I'm seeing uh, fire and, 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 and <laughs> long nails and stuff. You know, so yeah. I'm seeing many things on the outside. So um, the the periods that we take are usually uh, uh, return to default settings period. I think for lack of a better word, where we are, we allow her body to get back to where it's meant mm. to be mm. because she has such a high level of hormones in her system and it still puts her down in many ways or it gets her up in many ways. So that is the period that we are at as we speak, where we are coming down from. Because 2020 was just literally yesterday, if yeah. you think about it. It wasn't too long ago. Um, we, we are considering exploring other options. We are uh, going to bring that up. I, I don't know if we have to bring that up later on now. No, not really. <laughs> so we are, we are exploring options and um, maybe moving forward we'll be able to make them known. As of now, we are on the point of having her to 
get back to where she's meant to be. Because the, the things I even had to stop doing just so that my, I, I, I'm a new biker mm -hmm. and I, I can't ride while my, my system is not stable. So there are things I've had to put on hold just so that my body gets back to my... Yeah. even affected the energies. Oh, when you talked about uh, the, 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 the events that she was planning, etc. Mm -hmm. She had to put those on hold because she puts a lot of energy into it, generally speaking. And she couldn't do that as well as she would have wanted to. Mm -hmm. So yes, many things had to really be put, uh, take a back seat because of that. Oh, wow. So uh, we're taking a short break after which we'll have Dr. Yamal Patel. Yamal Patel, Dr. Yamal Patel is an obstetrician gynecologist. He's going to tell us about the first first line treatment for infertility, as well as answer questions from Sheila and Dr. Tele Waki. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching Parenting Today. Today we are discussing infertility. Uh, before the break, we had Sheila Waki and Dr. Tele Waki, a couple that has taken us through their journey. And right now we are joined by Dr. Yamal Patel. Dr. Yamal Patel is an obstetrician gynecologist uh, who's going to tell us more about infertility. Welcome, Dr. Ari. Thank you. Now, up to what time of trying can, can one start getting worried? Uh, so I think... Uh, if I rephrase that question, it would mean that how would you diagnose or define infertility? Yeah. Uh, so infertility is, is varied uh, depending on the age of presentation as well. But in general, it's defined as the inability to conceive by a couple after trying for one good year without any protection. But I don't think the same rule would apply to someone who is 35 or a couple who is 36 to 40 years of age. So we'll have to cut short there. But in definition wise, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what causes infertility? Let's start from there. Well, uh, so infertility first is defined as primary and secondary. Uh, primary infertility is infertility in a couple when they've never gotten pregnant in their life. And secondary infertility is infertility in a couple who may have gotten pregnant once before or a couple of times before. Uh, whether it's ended up with a live birth or not, it doesn't matter. It could be an ectopic pregnancy, it could be a miscarriage, but uh, it's still a pregnancy. So any pregnancy that has happened once in a woman and now she has a challenge getting pregnant again same rule applying, they've tried for a year or so after that, unless certain conditions change, as I told you about the age, mm -hmm. then it's called secondary infertility. Now the two may have slight different reasons as well, because in the first one, she never got pregnant at all, meaning we are looking at causes for uh, infertility which have been there and have never been addressed. And the second one, something happened after she got the first pregnancy, and now she's not able to get pregnant a second time. So in general, causes can be divided into, let's say, female factor, mm -hmm. male factor, combined factor, and unexplained factor. So that's the basic four groups. And uh, roughly speaking, we have a 30% incidence of female factor, 30% mm -hmm. male factor, um, around 25% unexplained, which means everything seems fine. You've investigated the couple and everything is absolutely normal but somehow they are not able to get pregnant. And in 5%, it may be other causes. Other causes. Uh, let's talk about the secondary infertility. Yes. What would cause that? So secondary means that, uh, as I've said, they've gotten pregnant once, now they're not able to. The most common causes of secondary infertility would be a condition change in the couple. So one could be age-related. Uh, one second one could be some infection that may have happened after the first one. The third one could be some intervention like uh, a miscarriage which was cleaned up and maybe not cleaned up well. or So therefore it caused a tubal block. All right? So now this, woman, this couple is not able to get pregnant anymore. Whereas the first time everything was fine. Something may have happened where they have had a pregnancy before but now for some reason they got an appendix surgery or a hernia surgery or something totally unrelated 
but that got complicated and it messed up the pelvis subsequently after that and they are not able to get pregnant. Some conditions happen over time. A woman who may have gotten pregnant before may not have had endometriosis or, or, or may not have had uh, adenomyosis for that matter and now it came in later. So these are some conditions that can happen a little later. There's also the hormone imbalances that change over time. So you may not have had that when you were in your teens or your early 25, 26, gotten a pregnant. And now when you really want it again after that, uh, you realize your hormones have changed and uh, you're not able to conceive that easily anymore. So these are some of the causes of secondary infertility. infertility. And what are some of the causes for infertility in men? Oh Yes, so thank you for the question about male infertility. So uh, let's understand one thing. There is a myth in the society uh, about infertility is a woman's thing. Unfortunately, that's not true because uh, men are equally responsible in 30% of the cases as are women uh, for infertility. So when we go to the causes of male infertility, let's understand the system involved, the reproductive system in the male infertility. So we have the testes, and then we have the ducts that correct, I mean, uh, from, from collect the sperms from their spermatids as they're maturing, and then they come out through the ejaculation system, through the penis. So the problem causing infertility could be anywhere. So let's go one, could be production. So if you have less production, you have damaged production, you have poor quality production, then there is a problem with the testes. Uh, the second thing could be transfer. So if there's a block, if there's an absence congenitally that is seen of the vast difference in some people, then the sperms produced here are no longer coming here. And that will be a problem. The third thing is they are coming, but they are, they are damaged on the process of coming. So there is something called retrograde ejaculation, where it's being mixed with urine. So instead of coming out in there, it's coming into the urine. It's useless for us. And then as the man passes urine, the urine has sperm, but that's not when we needed it. And then there is the issue of the, the endocrinological, or let's say that's hormonal changes, which interfere with production. Another possibility would be in ejection. So if there's a problem with ejection uh, because of premature uh, ejaculation, or if there is a problem with erection, so all those are leading to causes. Then we have hormonal interference. So if we have a hypo or a hyperthyroidism, it can interfere with the production. Hyperprolactinemia is a hormone called prolactin, which if elevated in men, would cause a decrease in the sperm counts. Uh, then we have immunologic, where you have antibodies that actually are damaging the, the, the sperms, and therefore they may not be able to fertilize as well. We may have abnormality in formation. So when you have, uh, when you have formation, we have a, a head, a body, and a tail. But there are so many sperms, they may be double-headed or a, a big head and a small head, and that would not be a, 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 a sperm that can fertilize. In immunologic, you may have DNA fragmentation where they are leading to abnormal pregnancies or they are not able to fertilize the egg. So all these are male factor uh, you know, causes. So what's the first line of treatment for infertility? So, so, as we said, I mean, in infertility, the first and foremost would be evaluation. So I think we first need to get to the bottom of the cause. Once we know the cause, we can propose a solution. Uh, not all uh, couples require the same treatment. So it, it's not ovulation induction for every single patient unfortunately. That would only mainly have a role in women with actual ovulation issues, right, or couples with ovulation issues. But if it is a male factor issue, then we'll have to focus something else. If it'll be a hormonal issue in women causing issues with thyroid or prolactin, you'll have to treat that. If there is a physical issue in the uterus, uh, the shape of the uterus, there is a septum, or the, the, there is an issue with the tubes, uh, where they are stuck, as we said in, in, in Sheila's uh, case. Uh, if there is a fibroid that especially is pushing onto the cavity or it is inside the cavity, if there is 
some changes in the uterine wall like adenomyosis where it affects implantation. Uh, if there's endometriosis that causes multifactorial uh, infertility. So we first narrow down to a cause. So there are levels of evaluation. We would start off with the basic evaluation and then we would say there is a level two evaluation which goes in further. We don't write all the tests at once. It, it, it's very many and it's quite tasking even financially on patients. So we would start off with the basic based on the history and examination after you've done a basic scan and evaluation. And then we start off with basic treatment. If that doesn't work in a couple of months, you now move and do additional tests that you may have missed out, which are level two tests as you climb the ladder of treatment. Okay, so fertility evaluation is step number one. Then you individualize treatment for fertility. I think we need like a whole show <laughs> for that, like with you uh, to discuss that. But right now we, we want um, Sheila and Dr. Taylor, if you have any questions for Dr. Tari, uh, this way you get to ask him. Dr. Tari, you, you, you've been amazing with us um, so far. I'd just like you to help us dispel some myths out there. Okay, yeah. sure, sure, thank you. I agree, uh, infertility uh, in our society has a lot of myths surrounding it. Uh, if I'm to clarify some of them, number one is that infertility is a woman's thing. Mm. I, I think I, I've mentioned it earlier and it's now clear that they, they should both take equal responsibility, uh, not always condemn a woman if a couple is not able to conceive. And this is more so sometimes not even from the couple itself, but it's from society. Yes. Uh, I, I think we have, to, we have to put an end to that. The second myth I would say is uh, people have a feeling that after the age of 40, they cannot conceive. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, that that's totally wrong. We, we have ways and, uh, and treatments that actually help women with conception. We've gone as far as women in my own uh, practice of 53 who've, mm. who's conceived, but then wow. uh, the circumstances around would be different. Uh, the third one would be uh, if it is a young couple, people think that we are, we are very young. Uh, we shouldn't have an issue mm. with fertility. I think age is, is just a number. A woman at 45 may conceive and a woman at 25 may not conceive, yes. uh, depending on the cause. So let's lot look at that. There's another myth around birth control. Uh, I think out there people fear birth control. They always say, if I use this, I may not be able to conceive. Well, let's be very clear on one aspect. Birth control protects you as long as you're taking it. Mm -hmm. The moment you stop birth control, it will not continue. There are very few birth control methods that might have a little bit of a residual effect for a few months before you normalize back to what it is, but they don't, any of them, none of them have a, a lasting effect. So I think that is a myth we should be clear. A myth like, if a woman has an irregular cycle, she always will have fertility issues. Again, not necessarily. There are women who have had PCOS and conceived uh, because the, the focus is more metabolic than in relation to fertility. So it would be different in different women. Uh, when we go to the issue of, uh, <laughs> funny, I've got so many people who come and say, Doc, now that you've told me to conceive or we're trying, can you please guide me on which position I should be <laughs> trying in? I'm like, but how would that make a difference? Yeah. Well, uh, I've been told that in certain positions I'll be able to conceive. Better. They even go as far as saying I may get a boy yes. if I do it in that position. And I would wonder how that works because how is it that in that position the X chromosome moves <laughs> and the Y Why? refuses <laughs> to go? Yeah. So I, I don't know, but uh, those are myths that I yes. think we should be True. clear. A myth like... I've had a child before, doc. Now, why am I getting difficulties getting pregnant? I shouldn't be. I am already proven fertile. Yes, that's where secondary infertility comes in. Things could have changed in your body and made it difficult now, and it wasn't so before. And finally, the, the biggest myth about whenever a couple is struggling and then you have these free advisors <laughs> in the form of friends and, 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 yes, and family, sir. and who come and say, I think you should try a bit more harder. Mm. I'm like, 
it's as though we haven't been knowing that and exactly. we have not been, been doing, doing what either. yeah so it's it's a bit wrong and i think giving that kind of an advice to a couple who's already suffering and is psychologically being affected only makes it worse yes. it doesn't help so let's refrain from such statements mm. would be my my advice Amazing. okay thank you so much dr now uh the situation where, like in our case we have a couple who has now come to you you've actually made a diagnosis and they require to be done uh, fertility treatment and they go through one cycle in this case into uterine insemination then went through ivf um, and none of those cycles yielded or rather they all failed uh, is there anything further beyond that that can be done or is that always the end of the trial because what most we all say once ivf is not working then that's it uh, yeah, I think thank you for the question and I can tell you I've had uh, I've had innumerable uh, you know clients in my practice uh, one I typically remember where she's had eight failed IVFs mm -hmm. and uh, we've managed to successfully get the couple pregnant with an IUI after that mm -hmm. and the reason was there was a pathology that was missed out mm -hmm. now in your case we've been through everything we've been through three IVFs and things have not worked out still if you ask me uh, I am somebody who doesn't give up and I would definitely never give up with a couple of, uh, of I mean my patients and I'll tell them that uh, what you should now look at differently if possible is focus on something called recurrent implantation failure so that's what has happened because you would say you've done your IVFs, you've gotten good eggs, you managed to put them in, for some reason they were not sticking. Yes. Uh, so we look at causes of implantation failure. Right. There are many centers in the world that now specialize in recurrent implantation failure couples. Mm. So I think it's not the end of the road for you if you ask me. Uh, it's just a pause mm. and it's for you to now rethink and maybe discuss with your IVF specialist and maybe uh, with me as well. And we see if we can channel you to a center that deals with recurrent implantation failures. Uh, there are very many possible causes for that. Uh, and once we try and pick up uh, a cause for implantation failure and maybe do things like endometrial receptor assay, receptivity assay, so they, they time when to actually put it in and then the chances would be better. So, for me, it's still a possibility. I like that. Thank you, Absolutely. thank you. <laughs> now, there's, there's a cost implication of all this. Yes. Mm. Um, it's, it's clear in Kenya, insurance doesn't cover it. It's an mm. exclusive um, service. Um, what, what's your take on, on, on this? Uh, it's beyond me to answer on behalf of insurance companies and how they make their policies. But yes, uh, as, as a clinician, as a person who helps uh, women and, uh, and, and couples, I would say that I also don't find it extremely fair yeah. uh, because the couple did not select infertility. Yeah. Uh, and if they had an infertility and uh, it, it's an issue that they're grappling with, if we give them a little support, uh, it would really go a long way in helping such people. It's not a choice uh, it, it's it's still a condition mm -hmm. so if we can find a possible cause for infertility which is a, a, a physical cause it's a disease it's a condition and it's not because they did not want to try on their own they've already have enough proof of trying I think we sh they should give it a second thought and say how do we include this and maybe add a little bit of a premium to it it, it might go a long way in helping such couples. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Building them up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We appreciate your information. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the great questions and uh, for the great responses, Dr. Yamal. That was Sheila Waki and Dr. Tele Waki, uh, a couple that was sharing their journey, and also Dr. Yamal Patel, an obstetrician gynecologist, who answered most of the questions um, and just helped us understand uh, infer infertility. So if you'd like to uh, get a support group, there's a support group that, that Sheila is an admin. Uh, it's called Waiting Wombs on Facebook. You can check it out on, on Facebook and uh, just get to know what, what they're doing. And it's a great support group. Uh, I checked out the page earlier on. Uh, so thank you so much for watching today's show. My name is Rebecca Miruri Mulure, and this has been Parenting Today.
Welcome to Thailand Carpet, where we deal with everything you would need at home, in the office, restaurant and hotels. We offer solutions to all your needs. We have a wide range of roofing solutions, tiles, sanitary furnishing and interiors. We have exquisite furniture, elaborate dining sets and classic comfy beds. Our prices are affordable across board. Feel free to visit us in any of our different branches in Mombasa, Kisumu and Nairobi. We also do site visits and offer clients with professional advice. You can reach us on this number for the site visit.